Hello, guys. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. How, How are, are you, you today? I'm good very good. good. Thanks evening, for asking. Teacher. So, Araceli, let me ask you before we start the class, uh, did you try to do the process that I mentioned to you yesterday? Oh, I'm sorry. I was very busy today. I couldn't do it. Oh, it's okay. But it's Okay. It's okay. So uh, try to do it during this. If you can do it tomorrow, but um, I'm telling you this because I need to see if you guys have the same problems because apparently some other groups, they try to get the certificate. And when they try to get it, there was a little problem that the date was not up, uh, was not up, updated. So they got something wrong on the date. So that's why I'm asking you because you already finished the, the platform. Okay, I will do it, I promise you. Okay, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> All right. So how is everybody going today? Are you doing great? Yes? Okay. <laughs> I see you with, yeah. with that big. Okay, very good. So, um, well, it is time for us to start. We are 11 today. And um, well, today we will change uh, the topic. Last week and yesterday, we had kind of a review of the health problems, right? So I hope you you studied the, the slides, the PowerPoint presentation that I sent you. So in the future, you won't have problems like, like with the pronunciation and things like that, okay? Yes. Okay, because for today, we will have something that is going to be like very different from the topic that we saw yesterday. Yesterday, as I mentioned to you, we saw still it was kind of a review of last week uh, class, but today it will be something like completely different. So um, for today, we have, uh, let me share the presentation with you so you can see what are we going to work with. Today, we have the infinitives. Have you ever heard about infinitives before? Any of you or any idea that you might have? No? Nobody? Yes, teacher. Yes. All right, Araceli. What can you tell me about that? Well, infinitives are um, verbs that are not conjugated. It's something like that, but we will go today like a little bit deeper so you can understand a little bit more about the infinitives and you can know how to how to use them in a sentence and things like that, okay? Good. So um, before going to the main topic, guys, I need you to place the other ones that are not working on the platform Try to do it, guys, because we are almost about to finish the model. We are going to have just like seven more classes. So it is time for you to keep working on that. We, we will have next week, we will have vacations. And you will have um, like some free time for you to try to work on that. Because remember, at the end of the course, you have to have at least 80% for you to go to the next module, okay? Have you guys, some of you, have you received any information about the next module? Any of you? Yes, Me, teacher. teacher. Yes, teacher. I received the message. I already received. All right, all right. That's very good. That means that people, uh, the people that is in charge of the platform, they are checking that you are working on that. So if they see that you keep on working on the platform, 
<clears throat> I'm sorry. That means that you're going to be able to be in the next module, okay? That is for you guys. And I want you all to be there, okay? Because I know that learning a new language, learning English in this case, it is something really nice. So why not to get the opportunity to keep on learning a little bit more, okay? So for the ones that are working, congratulations, okay? And try to keep on doing that, okay? So, uh, yes. yes, go ahead, Araceli. Yeah, just one more thing. Um, mm -hmm. Next week, we will be free, right? Let's say that we'll be free, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, but... Um, I will be I will be celebrating my my birthday. <laughs> oh really? Yes. Okay, very good. That's nice. Yeah. Uh huh. That is why everybody is free. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations is now because next week we won't have classes. We won't have classes. Oh, yes because it's gonna be free, like free time for you, but you have to keep on working during that time. If you haven't finished the, the platform yet, please try to do it, guys. Because yes. I need, quiero que todos vayan al next model, okay? So please do it. So let, going to the main topic that we have for today, that is the infinitives, we are going to learn step by step the things are, uh, about infinitives. So with that being said, first of all, we're going to know what are infinitives. And today, I'm not going to speak that much. You are going to be the ones that are going to help me. Why? Because I need to see you practicing and practicing a little bit more English, okay? Because I have seen El Cervado that some of you, when you go to the breakout rooms, you don't know how to express yourself in English. You're speaking Spanish over there. So it's very important that at least you try to do something to keep on practicing that. Because you know, in El Salvador, nobody else around us speaks English. So it's very important for you that within this time, that we are in class, you keep on practicing that because around you, there's no people speaking in English, just Spanish, okay? So try to practice during the class. So um, with that being said, I need the, um, let me see someone. Mr. Reynaldo, can you please help me reading the meaning of that? Okay. What are infinitives? An infinitive is the word to plus the base form of, the, of a verb. Mm -hmm. I can also function as an adjective or adverb. Yes. It is not a preposition. It is not a preposition. It's very important that you know what is that. Very, very simple. It is the word to plus the base form of the verb. Let's see some examples. We have here, this is the structure. You see, the structure that we have, it is the word to plus the verb. We have some examples over there, to cook, to use, to like. That's it, that is an infinitive, very, very easy. Not the hard to, or something that you want to understand, okay? Keep it simple. The word to plus the verb in the base form, and that will be an infinitive. Sometimes you can get confused with prepositions, but that's why it says over there, it is not a preposition. Because what if, as an example, let's say this as an example, what if I have, the word to, but instead of a verb, I have the word house and I say to house. Will that be an infinitive? What do you think? No, no, because house is not verb. Correct, that is correct. House is not a verb. So house is a noun. 
And if we do not have a verb before the word to, that is not an infinitive. Keep that in mind. If you have the word to plus the verb, that will be an infinitive. But if you after, I'm sorry, after the word to, you do not have a verb, that is not an infinitive, okay? Perfect. So let's see. How do we word or how do we create sentences with uh, the infinitives in the positive or affirmative way? Let me tell you that in this case for the infinitives, as, uh, as it says there, there is not an, a specific form. There is not an, a specific form. Let's see. Let's see some examples so you can understand a little bit more. We have two verbs over there. What does to collect means, Sandra? Araceli. To co that means uh, cobrar. Cobrar. Mm -hmm. Or, or oh, collectar. Or collectar, that will be the, 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 the one of the meanings that, that these verbs have. So, yes. Basilia, what does to find means? Encontrar. Encontrar, very good. So here we have an example. And later on, you will understand why it says there that there is not in a specific form. But this moment, it is just general information for you. But later on, you will understand why. Here we have an example. The first one, to collect. To collect. Example. She became, she came to collect her paycheck, her paycheck. So to find, to find the three birds went to find firewood. The three birds went to find firewood. As you can see here, there's not a specific form for you to create a positive sentence. That's why it says there, there's not a specific form. It's really simple. Later on, you will understand a little bit more. So let's see what happens with the negative ones. Is there something with the negatives? Let's find out. On the negatives, be really careful. Pay attention to this. Pay attention, because if not, you could get confused. Most of the time, we know that for you, in order for you to create a sentence, who can tell me what is the simple structure that we have to create a sentence? The simple structure. Who can tell me that? A negative one. A simple, simple structure in negative. Just the word Anyone? Hi, it's subject plus plus negative plus negation plus verb because we, we say I don't know, right? So first this the negative uh, form of uh, the auxiliary, you know? Of the auxiliary, not. very good, huh? Be very subject good. Subject plus not plus mm -hmm. verb. Ah, let's okay. compliment, I'm sorry. Okay, compliment. Eunice Ramirez, yes. what happened if I have the verb be and I have and I want to say ella es una doctora? How would you say that? In negative form? Yeah, in negative. She is in a doctor. She is an adapter or she is not, okay? So, following the example, siguiendo el ejemplo que ella dijo ahorita, she is not a doctor. Tenemos, en el caso del verb be, we have pronoun, verb be, the word not, and the complement. Eso es lo que sabemos, que es the basic structure to create a sentence. But... 
That's what I was telling you. Be really careful with infinitives because the infinitives, they create in a very different way the negative form. So let's find out. We have here four verbs, to go, to be, to sing, and to eat. What does to sing and to eat mean, Karen Melendez? Sorry, teacher, uh, I don't listen. What does sing and to sing, I'm sorry, and to eat means? I don't know, teacher. Let's see, Loida Pineda, do you know what does sing and eat means? Yes, to sing is cantar and to eat is comer. Very good, thank you so much. Okay, let's see how do we create the negatives or the negative sentence in the infinitives. You see here, we have first example, I decided not to go to London. If you can see there, first of all, we add the word not, and then we add the infinitive. Example number two, she asked me not to be late. Number three, I'd like to not to sing I like you not to sing so loudly. Ahora que ya vimos los adverbs, who can tell me in number three, what is the adverb? In sentence number three, what is the adverb? Lovely. Loudly, why? Because I, 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 Think is okay. for L and Y. For L and Y, that's very good. That is an adverb. I'd like you not to sing so loudly, okay? Number four, I rather not eat meat. So if you can see there, it's kind of different the way we create negative sentences with infinitives. Any of you have questions at this moment? Questions so far? Any questions at the moment? In the last one, don't use to, not to eat, only not eat meat. Oh, not to eat, yes, very good. There was a finger mistake over there. Thank you so much for the observation. Very good, because that means that you're paying attention to the details, all right? Thank you. So there, it's supposed to be on number four, I rather not to eat, not to eat. Thank you so much for that, Katya. So if there's no questions, let me tell you that for the infinitives, they have very different ways to go into a sentence. En este caso que vamos a ver right now, the infinitives van a ser el sujeto de la oración. Yes, that's why we have there subject of a sentence. Generalmente, we know that the subjects are I, you, we, they, he, she, it, right? Personal pronouns. But here, with the infinitives, they can act as subjects as well. So we will see. How do, how do they do that? Loida Pineda, can you help me, help me reading that meaning, please? Yes. Infinitives to appear as a subject of a sentence from the time to time. To time, thank you so much. So let's see some examples over here. We have to be an astronaut is my dream. You can see there the infinitive to be, it is acting as the subject of the, of the sentence. 
Yes. How do you know that it's going to be a subject? Easy, because it's going to be at the beginning, right? Because you know that in order to create a sentence, the subject always go at the beginning. So very simple. If you see that the infinitive, it goes at the beginning, that means that the infinitive is working as a subject of the sentence. Uh, let me see. Who else? Um, Reinaldo, help me reading uh, sentence number two. Then goes Carla Lima. Then goes Stephanie Ramirez. And the last one, Jenny Glorivel. Okay, go ahead. To have a hamburger was what Shane wanted. All right, very good. Next one. Hello. Hello, Carla Lima, are you there? All right, I think she's not there. Joaquin, go ahead. Okay. Let's do this. <clears throat> to hold the job was what the manager promised. To hold the job was what the manager promised. Thank you so much. Stephanie Ramirez, go ahead. To sleep before the flight is a good idea. Very good. And the last one. Uh, no lo veo, teacher. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. My bad. To spend 30 dollars on a hair haircut is out of the question. To spend $30 on a haircut is out of the question. Thank you so much. Okay, is there any question that you probably may have according to the subject of the sentence? Any question? May I make a sentence, teacher? Yes, go ahead. To work hard is my satisfaction. Repeat that again, please. To work hard is my satisfaction. To work hard is my satisfaction. That's very good. Very good example. So remember, keep in mind that if you see at the beginning of a sentence an infinitive, at that moment, it means that the infinitive is working as a subject of the sentence, okay? That's the only thing that you have to keep in mind. Thank you, teacher. Any other questions so far? No questions, guys. I'm telling you this because we will have some exercises at the end. So I need you to understand that. I, I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, when you say that the infinitive um, appear like, like a subject in a mm -hmm. sentence, mm -hmm. it's because the verb is a subject mm -hmm. or yep. the person that the, uh, what is saying the verb for example to be an astronaut is my dream so the subject is the verb to be in this the case mm -hmm. i am the subject oh, um, my question is mm -hmm. if if the subject is a first person let's say it like i i, I try to i Let's say that I understood your, your question. Your question is that even if you are using an infinitive there, but you are deeply talking about you, right? Exactly, because, like because, a first person. Like a third person, not involved in the sentence, but still involved in your thought, because you know that, for example, as example that is there, number one, if I said to be an astronaut is my dream, I deeply know in my thought that I'm talking about myself. 
Yes. It is not there specifically on the sentence, but I know that I'm talking about myself. That is right. Yes, um, your question was if you, you're talking about something like the third person, yes. You're talking about a third person, not exactly showed in the sentence, but you're talking about a third person. Yes? Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. But in this uh, case, the verb, the infinitive, it is acting as the subject because you're not mentioning a pronoun or something. You are mentioning the verb. In that verb, it is acting as the subject. Even, even though you know that you're deeply talking about yourself in that case. But if, if I... Uh, if I, if I say to be an astronaut, is mm -hmm. her dream? So if what, we say what that... What is the subject? The subject is her. No, in that case, her, it won't be a subject. Why? Because that is an adjective, a possessive adjective. Her, a possessive adjective. So... Still, the verb be to be, it will still be the subject. Because if you say to be an astronaut is her dream, ser un astronauta is es su sueño de ella, right? We know that we, we are talking about her. We're talking about her, but in that case, that her, esa palabra, her, is it's a possessive. A possessive. But if I say to be an astronaut, if the dream of Joaquin. Like second example, Shane is the subject. All right, so let's see, um, you said. Uh, I think uh, the sentences is uh, same or equal uh, verbo tacito en español. Yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay, so uh, Loida, as you said, um, to be an astronaut is the dream of Pedro, let's oh, say. Pedro. <laughs> Pedro. So if we say that Pedro, he won't be the subject. Let me tell you why. Because at that moment, Pedro will be a complement. ¿Por qué va a ser un complemento? Because you're giving extra information. And you're saying uh -huh. that to be an astronaut is Pedro's dreams. So in that moment, aunque ya sabemos que Pedro podría ser un sujeto, pero en este caso, gramaticalmente hablando, Pedro pasaría a ser a complement. A complement. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Thank That's you. good. So it's good for you to ask, better to understand a little bit more. So thank you so much for asking. So you don't get, se quedan con la duda, okay? So no questions at all? Any other question that you may have? No? No, okay. Let's go to the next one. We have the bird, their infinitives. So, Katia Monterrosa, can you help me reading, please? Verb infinitive. A verb infinitive is an infinitive without two. You're most likely to see verb infinitives with more verbs. Who, who, can, should, will, may, might, ought to, shall, and other. Okay, do you remember when we saw the model verbs? Do you remember the class? So now it's very important that you remember that. As the explanation there says, bare infinitives are the ones that they not have the word to. Estos no tienen la palabra to, okay? So you can get confused on that and you can say, okay, because it doesn't have the word to, this is not an infinitive. But let me tell you that you are wrong. Even though 
we know that the word to needs to be connected with the verb. In this case, the verb infinitives, le decimos en this way, lo llamamos así, because if you have a model verb, that will mean that the verb that will be next, you don't need to add the word to. ¿Qué pasa si tenemos un modal antes, el verbo siguiente ya no va a tener to y aún así siempre va a ser un infinitive. Let me show you some examples here. Here we have, you see, I could be an astronaut. I could be an astronaut. Grammatically, grammatically, you cannot add the word to. You cannot say I could to be. No, it sounds weird, right? It sounds weird when you say I could to I could to be an astronaut. Sounds weird. So remember. What can you see there? What is the model verb in the first one? Could. Could, very good. So remember, if be after the pronoun or the subject, you have a model verb, the verb that is going to be next, it will be an infinitive, but without the word to. Yes, this is going to happen only with the model verbs. Unicamente con los model verbs. Let's see example number one. Number number two, I'm sorry. Let me ask Eunice Ramirez. Help me with example number two, please. Shane might have another hamburger. Thank you so much. Eunice, what is the model verb over there? Might. Might, very good. Vasilia Monterrosa, number three. Can the manager hold the job for me? What is the model verb? Can. Can, number, number four, let me see. Um, Candida Reyes, number four. You, you sure sleep a little more before our fly. Thank you. And what is the model verb there? Sure. Should. Thank sure. you. Let me see. Mm, Diana Yamilet, the last one. Okay, and what is the model verb in that one? Do you know? Spend, okay. Can someone tell me what is the model verb on the last one? One. Want. Want. Okay. Want. And, and what is want? The contraction of what model verb? Will. 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 It is the will contraction not. of will not. will not. In English, in English, we do not say will not. So we can say will not, but if you want to make the contraction of those two words, it will be want. So in that case, the model verb we have or the, the model verb that we're using there is will. So any questions so far? Someone that didn't understand that. Did you understand? Just yes, under. yes, I understand. Okay. Yes, I do. 
Very good. So if there's no questions, here we have. It is very important you, that you remember some of these verbs. What does this mean? Estos son los verbos con los que después de estos verbos vamos a utilizar un infinitivo. So, si yo tengo, if I have in a sentence, the word or the verb love, you can see it here, right? Here it is, the verb love. So if I say, I love, I love to be a teacher. I love to be a teacher. You see? After the verb love, I have an infinitive. So with these verbs, all these lists that we have here, after, these verbs, the next verb is gonna be an infinitive. So we have, let's see, we have all those verbs. Let me see if you know them. Afford, appear, arrange, ask, veer, begin, there, decide, expect, fail, forget, happen, hate. Help, hope, intend, learn, like, love, manage, mean, offer, prefer, prepare, pretend, promise, refuse, remember, seem, star, try, want, and wish. That is the list. Let me see, uh, Candida Reyes, help me reading this first part, the first part of the verbs. Help me reading them. I want to hear you, your pronunciation. Let's go. You see, yes, but that's it. L leave it there. Leave it there. Thank you. Let me see someone else. Joaquin, the second part. Okay, teacher. Fall, for, forget, happen, hate, help, hope, intent, learn, like. Okay. So, um, let me see who else. Elizabeth de Amaya, help me with the third one. Okay, slow, manage, mean, offer, prefer, prepare, present, promise, prepare. Thank you. Carla Lima, I see that you raised your hand. Carla yes, Lima. Teacher. I would like to participate. Carla Lima. Can you listen to me? I'm sorry, I cannot Hello? hear you that well. Can you hear me? What about now? Can you listen to me? Let me, let me see, let me see. Hello, teacher. Oh. All right, all right. So go ahead. Yes. Now I see she, she, she wants to participate. Okay, go ahead. Which part do you want me to read? The last one. Okay. Remember, seem, start, try, want, wish. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Guys, I see that some of you still have uh, the, the pronunciation here. For example, uh, el verbo iniciar, star, o empezar, star. I hear that some of you say it in this way, estar, estar, no. We do not say the letter E at the beginning. What do we do to pronounce that? We just make the sound of the letter S and we say star, 
star. We do not say estar. No, no, no. Star. Okay. Just the sound of the letter S. Just the sound. Star. So I will repeat it one more time. Afford, appear, arrange, ask, veer, begin, there, decide, expect, fail, forget, happen, hate, help, hope, intend, learn, like, love, manage, mean, offer, prefer, prepare, pretend, promise, refuse, remember, seem, star, try, want, and wish. So, this is the list of the verbs that you're going to use or that are going to be followed by infinitives. Here we have some examples. I love to swim at night. Here, as you can see, we have the verb love. And after the verb love, we have an infinitive. I love to swim. Then we have the verb want. Here we have on the list the verb want. And after the verb want, we have the infinitive to see. She doesn't want to see you again. The last one, it be, it's beginning. Here we have the verb begin. Here it is, begin. Then we have an infinitive, to snow. Okay, it's very simple. This list, this list, I'm sorry, of the verbs that you have here are going to be always followed by an infinitive, that's it. Questions so far? Questions? Oh, teacher, uh, in this case, I love to swim at night. Uh, I could only say uh, I love swimming at night, right? Correct. That's why the gerund and the infinitives, they have like this close, like oh. this close. And it is very important yeah. that you know the difference. Later on, we will study the gerunds, but at this moment, we are just on the infinitives, but very good observation. You can use that as well. Stephanie mm -hmm. Ramirez, do you have a question? Yes, I have a question about a very intent. Is like a try? The verb intent, yeah, it is a synonym of the verb try. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, any other question? No questions, okay. So here we have the way do we have to use the infinitives after an adjective. And here we have an structure. Let's see. Here we have to see it, subject, then the verb to be, then the adjective, then you can use for or of someone, then the infinitive, and last, the rest of the sentence. Example number one. Let me see, let me ask someone. Uh, Loida Pineda, help me with the first example. It is good to talk. It is good to talk. Example number two, Reynaldo. It is good of you to talk to me. Thank you. Next one, Candida. Oh my God, there's someone who has a lot of music in the background. It is important to be patient. 
It is important to be patient. Thank you. Then goes Diana Yamilet, then Jenny Gloribel, and Karen Melendez. Help me with the next ones, please. I am happy to be here. I am. Next one. It is important for Jet to be um, at yet with the later brother. Which one are you reading? Um, one, two, three, four. Repeat it again. It is important for Jake to, to be party, party with his related brothers. It is important for Jake to be patient okay. with his little brother. Little thank, brother. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. I need you to understand this structure. If you know the structure, that will help you to understand how to create question, I'm sorry, sentences with following the infinitives after an adjective. Subject, verb be, adjective, for of someone, the infinitive, and the rest of the sentence. That's it. Questions for this one. No questions. It sounds like some, some someone of you, it is at a party. I can listen to some perro music over there. What are someone to infinity? I don't know who that is, but it's okay. Let's go to party. <laughs> I can I can Araceli's listen. Party. Invite. Is it Araceli? Is that you? No? Not right. No, I don't have any party. I don't know, but it, it is someone. I can hear the sound of the music in the background. It is probably oh, yeah. Joaquin. Wow. Joaquin is at the party right now. <laughs> All right, so any questions so far? No questions? No questions. No questions, perfect. And the last part that we have is this. Do you remember when we saw adverbs? Yes. All right, so now it is time for you to remember that. Basilia Monterrosa, can you please help me reading that part? Infinities with adverbs. Just like a single word, adverb, and an infinitive use it as an adverb always, describes a verb. An adverbial infinity usually occurs at the beginning or at the end of a sentence, and does not need to be near the verb it describes. Uh, have you ever heard, or do you know, uh, who is Cardi B, the singer? Do you know who Cardi B is? No? The singer? Cardi B? All right. Yes. And do you know what is the sound she makes? Of course. Of All right. Course. That's the same way you are going to pronounce this verb. El verbo que está ahí, occur. That is the same way you have to pronounce it. Okay? It says an adverbial infinitive usually occurs at the beginning or at the end of the sentence. I was telling you that because if you know who Cardi B is, you know the sound she makes when she's trying to express. She makes a sound like occur. So that's the same way you have to pronounce that word, okay? So let's see, here we have an example. 
in this example, the infinitive, it is acting as an adverb, but this adverb, it is at the beginning. Tom, it says, to win, you need the highest number of points. ¿Cuál es el verbo que está modificando? Need. Need. El verbo que está modificando, describiendo, es need. And the infinitive is to win. ¿Cómo vamos a saber que el infinitive, it is acting as an adverb? ¿Cómo lo vamos a ver? Le, vamos a ver si, si, si se fijan en los detalles. ¿Qué hay allí? A coma. A coma. There is a coma. That's very good. So if you have a coma over there, it will mean that that infinitive will be acting as a number. Yes, as you can see in the number. Can you guys hear me? Hello? 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 Hello, teacher. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm sorry, but there was a blackout. The electricity went off, so I lost connection with you. And because you know, Wi-Fi doesn't work when you are when you don't have electricity. So that happened. I'm sorry, but it was just less than a minute. So I don't know what, what happened. Maybe the electricity or something. But well, we're back. So um, I was telling you something about, let me see, this part, right? So we have here the, the infinitives working as other verbs. And uh, I was telling you that something very simple that you can um, know if they are working as other verbs, it is because before the infinitive, there will always be a coma. And that's the easiest way you have you can find it. Here on these sentences, you can notice that the infinitive, it is at the beginning of the sentence, but an infinitive acting as a number can also be at the end. But at the end, as you can see there, there's no comma. There's no comma. So let's see. You need the highest number of points. It is the same one that I have here. Different, right? No, it is the same one. Yes, you see it? Here, the infinitive acting as an adverb, it is at the beginning with a comma. But in this one, it is the same one, but it's at the end without a comma. So, let's see. Let me see here. It says, it's giving you a hint. You can always identify an adverbial infinitive by inserting the test word in order. ¿Qué significa esto? Que si a estas, para poder saber si es, si es un infinitive acting as a number, podemos agregarle la palabra in order. Let's see here. You see there? In order to win, you need the highest number of points. And it makes sense. Ahora, para saber si al final está actuando como un adverbio, porque si nos fijamos acá, if we see here, 
there's no comma, right? And if there's no comma, how are you going to identify that it's an infinitive acting as a number? So very simple. You only have to add, solo tienen que agregar la palabra in order if si la oración makes sense, that means that the infinitive, it is acting as a number. You got the point? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes? Guys, do you understand? I'm afraid not. Yes, teacher. No, teacher, I'm confused. All right. If you're confused, ask the questions. Why are you confused or which part you don't understand? Mm -hmm. Which part you don't understand? Let me know. Hello. When, when are we going to use in order to and when all the to win? Okay. Let's go back to here. Here, we have the infinitive acting as an adverb. And yes. How can you identify that? Easy. Because we have a comma over there, right? And since we have a comma there, we can identify that this infinitive is acting as an adverb. But the question is, if the infinitive acting as an adverb goes at the end, how are you are going to identify that if you don't have a comma there? ¿Cómo lo vamos a identificar? Fácil. Como aquí no tenemos coma y queremos saber and we want to know if this infinitive is acting as an adverb, what do we do? Easy. We go and we add in order to. Y podemos agregar in order to, aunque tenga la coma, pero es más fácil for you to identify that it's acting as an adverb because you already see the, the coma, right? Yes, pero en el segundo ejemplo, it's kind of difficult to understand. Es un poco difícil de entender si está actuando como infinitive, como un adverb. Pero qué es lo que les va a ayudar to know? La palabra in order to. Entonces venimos, agarramos la oración en before, antes que empiece el infinitive, ponemos la palabra in order to. Y si la oración makes sense, that means that the infinitive that is at the end, it will be acting as an adverb. Okay. Later now. Thank you. Okay, so someone else? Stephanie, is it clear now? Or you're still confused? Yeah, still confused with the word in order. And uh, I don't know if it has a meaning. Yeah, it, 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 obviously, it obviously has a meaning. What's the meaning of that? A fin de, if I say, in order to win, a fin de ganar, o con el fin de ganar, necesitas tener los puntos más altos o los números más altos. If the, si la oración, cuando agregamos in order, tiene sentido, entonces significa que ese infinitive, it is acting as an adverb. Pero ¿qué pasa en la primera oración? De una sola vez podemos saber que está actuando como un adverb. ¿Por qué? 
porque tenemos la coma. Esta palabra in order es utilizada solamente cuando el infinitive acting as an adverb goes at the end. Va al final, mm -hmm. porque como no sabemos, si te fijas en la segunda, we don't know. Si no tuviéramos la palabra in order ahí, si no la tuviéramos ahí, estaría algo mm -hmm. como, como esto, ¿sí? Y no supiéramos, is that an, an infinitive acting as an adverb? No supiéramos y nos preguntaríamos eso, ¿está actuando como un adverbio? Pero ahora, entonces venimos y decimos, ok, ¿cómo hago para saber si está actuando como un adverbio? Fácil, vengo y le agrego, antes del infinitivo, le agrego la palabra in order. Entonces, si le agregamos la palabra in order antes del infinitivo, en the sentence makes sense, that means that the infinitive it is acting as an adverb. Teacher, it's clear now. Okay. Use the word in order for all sentences. In the second, in the second sentences. Mm -hmm. Can you repeat in, your question one more time? Let's use the word in order for all sentences. No, no for all sentences. You can use it. La puedes usar para tratar de ver si este infinitivo it is acting as an adverb. Por ejemplo, si tenemos una oración, you, we have a sentence, but you don't know, you don't know if that sentence or that infinitive it is acting as an adjective or it is acting as an adverb. So if you have, a, let's see that you're in an exam, estás en un examen, and you want to know, okay, is this infinitive acting as a, an adverb or, or as an adjective? Entonces vienes y le agregas la palabra in order. Pero qué pasa si la oración que te han puesto no es un adverb, sino que es un infinitive acting as an adjective. No va a tener sentido. Pero si vienes y hay otro ejercicio, and there's another exercise, and you add y agregas the word in order, and when you add the word in order makes sense, that will automatically means that that infinitive, it is acting as an adverb. Okay, teacher. Okay, guys, is it clear? Because I want to, to be clear that you don't have doubts, that you, that you get this clear. Because if you have questions or, or you didn't understand something, ask me because I am here to help you. Do not be afraid. There's no, there's no dumb questions. No hay preguntas tonta, vea. Todos estamos acá to learn. All right, so if you have something that you didn't understand, ask for that, ask. So is it clear the infinitive with adverbs? I need a yes or I need a no to so tell yes, me. Yes, yes. All right. Let's see. So this, the punctuation note, la, esto de punctuation note, ya lo saben. If at the beginning you see a comma, that is an adverb. If at the end you want to know if it is acting as an adverb, add the word in order. Yes, that's it. So the practice time. And um, because we don't have that much time for this, uh, for this, so I'm just going to ask you randomly. Uh, I'm going to ask someone random, so I will see if that person help me. So, uh, Araceli, can you help me with the first one? Um, but but what, uh, what verb can I 
can I use there? I can, I can teach. Oh, I can teach English. I can teach English. Is it okay if I tell you I can to teach English? Is it okay if I tell you I can to teach English? No, 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 no. I can teach English. Why are why are you not adding the two? Because it, that is a model uh, verb. A model verb. Thank you so much. Let me see another one. Katya, number two. We have to do our homework. We have to do our homework. Thank you so much. Joaquin, number three. You must be at home. You must be at home. You must be at home. Be at home. Okay. Uh, Carla Lima, I see that you raise your hand. Is it okay what Joaquin said? You must be at home. Uh, maybe it's one way to say it, but it could be better if he say. Uh, you must stay at home. Teacher. Very good. Very yes, good. That is correct. Teacher. Thank you, Carl. Yes, Joaquin. Teacher, the correct pair is stay. To stay. stay. To stay at home. Thank you. ¿Por qué no usamos el be, Loida? Why don't we use the verb be there? Because must is a model verb. Okay, but... Joaquin said, you must be at home. Why uh, don't we use B? Por qué no usamos B? Why is it better uh, if I use the verb stay? Because stay, uh, I don't know. Okay, uh, the verb stay, do you know the meaning of the verb stay? Permanece. Stay. Pues, stay. Mm -hmm. Es permanecer o quedarse. Quedarse. All right. Even if we know that in Spanish the verb means ser o estar, if we say you must be at home, it will be something like debes estar en casa, right? But if we use that verb, si usamos ese verbo, we're saying that in Spanglish. That is Spanglish. That is not English. So we use the verb stay because to stay at home. Debes estar en casa o quedarte en casa, okay? I just need that to clarify. Thank you. All right, Thank guys. You. So I think that is, is gonna be enough for today because it is 9.08. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to send you the presentation right now as, as soon as I finish the the class with you so you can practice on your home or during vacations or something like that if you didn't understand something but please if you have any doubt or something that you don't understand feel free to ask in the whatsapp group okay feel free to ask don't be afraid and ask any question that you might have okay so uh um, yes i have a question do yes, you remember the last time I asked you? They haven't added you yet. I don't know what happened, Carla, and I'm so sorry for this because you have been telling me like two times already, and I already spoke with the guys uh, of Human Resources, and they told me, okay, you know what? We're going to send her the information. And the second time you told me, I also asked to one person and she told me, okay, we already sent her the, the, the email so she can go to notifications or spam to verify if she has the, the email there. But haven't you received the email yet? Did you receive it or you didn't? What teacher?
Oh, Carla, because do you remember last time she told me that she was not on the WhatsApp group? And because I'm not the administrator, so I cannot add her personally. It, hello? It need, yes, hello? Sorry, teacher. Uh, I thought, I thought I, uh, my microphone was on, but it was off. So I was talking just to me, but I haven't received the, the, the link to, to be at the group. All right, so that, that must be a problem with the human resources department. I will do it the last time, Carla, and I'm so sorry that you're going through this because they supposed to send you all the links in order for you to, to be in those groups. But I will do it the yes. last time, so I will do it tomorrow morning, and I will let them know that you need to be in the group because you are not receiving the presentations. So I will let them know that tomorrow, and just in case, uh, I am, I, um, well, they tell me any type of information, I will let you know personally, okay? Okay, teacher, thank you. All um, right. Just something that they have been um, sending me is to, to, to fill again the, the forms to be at the group. Okay. Um, lo único que me han estado enviando es normalmente los links para enviar mi do y mi did, eh, llenar la forma de, de inscripción, pero jamás han mencionado algo acerca del link. All right, so I will let them know tomorrow morning. So let's keep in touch. So if I know something, I will let you know because I have all your information as well, okay? Okay, teacher, thank you. Okay, good night to you all, guys, and thank you so much for Bye. being on the class. Good, good night. night. Good night, teacher. Good night, everybody. Good night.